Leadership is a hot topic, and rightly so. More than ever, we are aware of our power as influencers, as people who can shape our environments through what we say and what we do. But before we're leaders, we're all followers. We're all being influenced by something or someone, even if we don't realize it. Who are you following? Jesus' invitation to his first disciples was simple. Follow me. There was no clever pitch or persuasive argument. There was no time to weigh up the pros and cons. And it's the same for us today. Jesus says, follow me. It's an invitation without condition. In Mark 14, we find the story of a woman who anointed Jesus at a place called Bethany. She took a jar filled with expensive perfume, broke it open and poured it over his head. The disciples were shocked. Why this waste, they asked. You may want to ask the same thing. The thought of wasted time, wasted money, wasted opportunities, it can haunt us. But Jesus points to a deeper reality. Rather than asking, was it necessary? He begs the question, was it beautiful? The woman demonstrated the kind of radical followership that Jesus asks of all of us. No holding back in the hope of a better offer but full-on, reckless devotion to him. A life pointed at beauty, not efficiency. Often the choices Jesus calls us to make as his followers run in contrast to the world around us. Living as his disciples can cost us not only our time, energy and resources, but our reputation, career or passions too. Sometimes it feels like it makes no sense at all. But it's more than following a cause or an idea or even a set of values. It's orientating our whole world around him, putting him in control as you walk with him, learn from him and live like him. And it's through following Jesus that we find a renewed relationship with our heavenly father. It's through him that we're freed from shame, hurt and the weight of sin. Nothing else can satisfy us the way that Jesus does. He's worth every sacrificial, expensive choice. In the same way that an artist goes through a series of choices to produce their work, so are our lives the sum of all the choices we make. No matter whether they're big, life-altering moves or tiny day-by-day -day decisions, they each contribute to who we're becoming. What would it look like for us with every one of those choices to put Jesus first? At university, it might impact who you spend your time with. It might affect how you use your money. It might change the words you use or the things you decide to do. Instead of a lie-in, you could use your mornings to open God's word and ask Jesus to meet with you. Rather than catching up with the news or social media on your way into campus, you could spend the time in prayer, committing your day to God and asking him what he wants you to notice. And rather than heading to church every week as an afterthought, depending on how you feel by the time you get to Sunday, you can make it a priority and let that rhythm shape your entire week. As you continue in your journey of following Jesus, as each choice you make puts him at the center, you'll continue to live a life defined, not by whether it was necessary, but whether it was beautiful.